Hello, fellow hardware nerds, and welcome back to Dallas, Texas, where we're reporting live from Supercomputing 2022. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined with the John Furrier on my left. Looking good today. Thank you, John. So are you. It's been a great show so far. We've had more hosts, more guests coming there before. I know. Amazing. We've super, got a whole thing it's going been a on. Super computing performance. It, <laughs> wow. And, and <laughs> we'll see how many times we can say super on this segment. Speaking of super things, I am in a very unique position right now. I am flanked on both sides by people who have been doing content on theCUBE for 12 years. Yes, you heard me right. Our next guest was on theCUBE 12 years ago, the third event, was that ever. right, John? First, third event, first ever VMworld. Yeah, the first ever VMworld, third event theCUBE ever did. We are about to have a lot of fun. Please join me in welcoming Justin Emerson of Pure Storage. Justin, welcome back. I, I, it's a pleasure to be here. It's been too long. You never call, you don't write. I, <laughs> great to see you. Yeah, likewise. <laughs> How fun is this? Uh, uh, has, has the set evolved? Is everything looking good? I mean, I, I can barely remember what happened last week, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember, a lot's changed. That VMworld, you know, Paul Moritz was the CEO of here. Remember at that time, his actual vision actually happened, but not the way for VMware, but the yeah. industry, the cloud, he called the software mainframe. We were kind of riffing. It was riffing. quite the decade. Unbelievable where we are now, how we got here, but not where we're going to be. And you're with Pure Storage now, which we've been, as you know, covering as well. Exactly. Where's the connection into the supercomputing? Obviously, storage, performance, big part of this show. Right, right. What's the, what's the take? Well, I think, um, super, super, first of all, it's great to be back at events in person. We were, we were talking before we Absolutely. went on, and it's, it's, been, it's been so great to be back at, uh, at live events now. It's been, it's been such a, a drought uh, over the last several Lovely. years. But uh, yeah, yeah, so, so I'm, I'm very glad that we're doing in-person events again. Um, for Pure, this is an in incredibly important show. You know, uh, the, the product that I work with, with uh, uh, Flashblade is, you know, one of our key areas is specifically in this high performance computing, AI machine learning uh, uh, kind of space. Uh, and so we're, we're really glad to be here. We've, we've met a lot of customers, met a lot of other, other folks, had a lot of really great conversations. So it's been a really great show for me. Uh, and also just seeing all the really amazing stuff that's around here. I mean, if you want to find, you know, you know, see what all the, the, the most cutting edge data center stuff that's going to be coming down the, 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 the pike, this is the place to do it. So one of the big themes of the show for us, and probably, well, big theme of your life, is balancing power, efficiency, you have a product in this category, Direct Flash. Can you tell yeah. us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so so Pure as a storage company, right, wh what do we do differently from everybody else? And, and if I had to pick one thing, right, I, I would talk about it's, it's, you know, as the name implies, we're, we're an all, we're purely Flash. We're an all Flash company. We've always been, don't plan to be anything else. And, and part of that innovation with Direct Flash is the idea of rather than treating a, a solid state disk as like a hard drive, right? Treat it as it as it actually is. Treat it like who it really is, and that's that's a very different kind of thing. And so, Direct Flash is all about bringing uh, native Flash interfaces to our product portfolio. And what's really exciting for me as a, as a Flashblade person is now that's also part of our Flashblade S portfolio, which just launched in June. And so, um, the benefits of that are are myriad, but you know talking about efficiency, the biggest difference is that um, you know, we can use like 90% less DRAM in our drives, which you know, everything, uses, everything that you put in a drive uses power, um, it adds cost and all those things, and so th that really gives us an efficiency edge uh, over, over everybody else. And at a show like this where, I mean, you walk, this, you walk the aisles and there's, there's people doing liquid cooling and so some immersion stuff, yeah. and the reason they're doing that is because power is just increasing everywhere, right? So, so if you can figure out how do we use less power in some areas, it means you can shift that budget to other places. And so if you can talk to a customer and say, well, if I could shrink your power budget for storage by two thirds or, or even you know, s save you two thirds of power, um, how many more accelerators, how many more CPUs, how much more work could you actually get done? So yeah. really exciting. I mean, less power, consumption, more power and compute. Right, Kind of exactly. power is at the center. So how about the AI implications? Where the use cases are? What are you seeing here? Um, a lot of simulations, a lot of students. Again, dorm room to the boardroom we've been saying here on theCUBE. Yeah. This is a great broad area. Where's the action? Uh, in, in, in the so, ML and the AI for yeah. you guys. So I think, um, not necessarily storage related, but I, I think that right now there's this enormous explosion of 
um, custom silicon around AI and machine learning, which I, as a, as a, you know, you said welcome hardware nerds at the beginning. I was like, ah, my people. Uh, <laughs> We're all here. Exactly. We're all right. here in <laughs> Dallas. <laughs> so wonderful. Um, you know, as a, as a, as a hardware nerd, uh, you know, we're talking about conferences, right? I, I was at, uh, uh, attended Hot Chips, and there's so much really amazing engineering work going on in the silicon space. It's probably the most exciting time for um, you know, CPU and accelerator just um, innovation in, you know, si since the days before x86 was the de facto standard, <laughs> right? And you could go out and buy a different workstation with 16 yeah. different ISAs. Um, that's really the, the, the most exciting thing. You know, I've walked past so many different places where uh, you know, our booth is right next to, uh, to, to Habana Labs with the, their Gaudi accelerator and they're doing this, this cute thing with uh, um, one of the AI image generators uh, in their booth, which is, which is really cute. We're gonna have to um, go check that out. Yeah, but uh, that to me is like one of the more exciting things around like innovation, at, at a, especially at a show like this where it's all about how do we how do we move forward the state of the art. What's different now than just a few years ago in terms of what's opening up the creativity for people to look at things that they could do with some of the scale that's different yeah, now? Well, well, I mean, every time the state of the art moves forward, what it means is is that the um, the the entry level gets better. Right, so, so if, if the, the high end is going faster, that means that the mid range is going faster, and that means that the entry level is going faster. So every, every time it pushes the boundary forward, it's, it's a rising tide that floats all boats. And so yeah. now, you know, the, the, the kind of stuff that's possible to do, you know, if you're a student in a dorm room, or if you're an enterprise, um, the, the world of the possible just keeps expanding dramatically. And, and, and expanding almost, you know, geometrically, like the, the amount of data that we, are, that we have, uh, you know, as a storage guy, I was coming back to data, <laughs> But um, the amount of data that we have and the, and the amount of, of compute that we have, and, and it's not just about the raw compute, but also the advances in all sorts of other things in terms of algorithms and you know, transfer learning and all these other things. There's, there's so much in amazing work going on um, in this area, and it's just kind of this Cambrian explosion of, of, uh, of innovation in the area. I love that you touched on the user experience for the community, no matter the level that you're at. And yeah. I, I, it's, it's been something that's come up a lot here. Everyone wants to do more faster always, but it's it's not just that. It, it's about making the experience and, and, and the point of entry into this industry mm -hmm. more approachable and digestible. For folks who may not be familiar, I mean, we have every end of the ecosystem here on the show floor. Where does pure storage sit in the whole game? Right, so, so as a storage company, right, what AI is all about deriving insights from data, right? And so everyone remembers that magazine cover, data's the new oil, right? And it's kind of like, okay, so what do you do with it? Well, how do you derive value from all of that data? And AI and machine learning and all of this supercomputing stuff is about how do we take all this data, how do we innovate with it? And so if you want data to innovate with, you need storage. And so you know, uh, our, our philosophy is that how do we make the best storage platforms that we can using the best technology for our customers that enable them to do really amazing things with, with AI and machine learning. And we've got different, different products, but you know, at, our, at the show here, what we're specifically showing off is our, our new Flashblade S product, which um, you know, I know we've had uh, pure folks on theCUBE before talking about Flashblade, but for, for viewers out there, Flashblade is our, our scale out unstructured data platform, and, and AI and machine learning and supercomputing is all about unstructured data, it's about yeah. sensor data, it's about imaging, it's about um, you know, uh, photogrammetry, all this other kinds of amazing stuff, but you got to land all that somewhere, you got to process that all somewhere, and so really high performance, high throughput, highly scalable storage solutions are really essential. It's an enabler for all of the amazing other kinds of engineering work that goes on at a place like supercomputing. It's interesting you mentioned data as oil. Remember, in 2010, that year, our first year of theCUBE, Hadoop world, Hadoop just started to right. come on the scene, which became, you know, kind of went away, and, but now you got you know, Spark and Databricks and Snowflake. Yeah, and it didn't go away, it just changed, right? It, it just, just got refactored yeah. and, and right size, I think, for what the people wanted it to be, easy to use. But there's more data coming. How is data driving innovation? As you bring, as people see, clearly the more data is coming. How is data driving innovation as you guys look at your products, your roadmap, and your customer base? How is data driving innovation for your customers? Well, I think every customer who has been, you know, collecting all of this data, right, is trying to figure out now what do I do with it? And and a lot of times people will collect data and then it will end up on, you know, lower, slower tiers, and then suddenly they want to do something with it. And it's like, well, well now what do I do, right? And so there's all these people that are reevaluating. Um, you know, we we when we developed Flashblade, we sort of made this bet that unstructured data was going to become the new tier one data. 
it used to be that we thought unstructured data, you know, it was emails and home directories and all that stuff, the kind of stuff that you didn't really need a, a really good DR plan on. It's like, yeah. ah, we could live. Now, of course, as soon as email goes down, you realize how important email <laughs> is. But, um, you know, it, it, the perspectives that people had on. on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Sorry. Yeah. laughs> the perspectives that people had on unstructured data and its value to the business was very different. And so yeah. now. Good, good bet, by the way. Yeah, it's, thank you. So, so now unstructured data is, is considered, you know, the, where, where companies are going to derive their value from. So it's whether they use the data that they have to build better products, whether it's they use the data they have to develop um, you know, improvements in processes, all those kinds of things are, are data driven. And so all of the new big advancements in, in industry and in business are all about how do I derive insights from data. And, and so machine learning and AI has something to do with that, but, but also, you know, it all comes back to having data that's available. And so, yeah. you know, we're, mm -hmm. we're working very hard on building platforms that customers can use to enable all of this you really know, it's interesting, Savannah, you know, the, the uh, top three areas we're covering for reInvent and all the hyperscale events is data, how does it drive innovation, and then specialized solutions to make customers' lives easier. Yeah. It's become a big category. How do you compose stuff? And then obviously compute, mm -hmm. more and more compute and services to make the performance go. So those seem to be the three hot areas. So, okay, data is the new oil, refineries, you've got right. good solutions. What specialized solutions do you see coming out? Because once people have all this data, they might have either large scale, maybe some edge use cases. Do you see specialized solutions emerging? I mean, obviously you've got DPUs emerging, which is great, but like, mm. do you see anything else coming out that people are- Like from a hardware standpoint? From or? a customer standpoint, they're making the customers' lives easier. So I got a lot of data flowing in, yeah. it's never stopping, it keeps powering in. Yeah. Are there things coming out that makes their life easier? Well, Have you seen anything coming out? Yeah, I think where we are as, a, as an industry right now with all of this new technology is we're really in this phase of the standards aren't quite there yet. Everybody is sort of like figuring out what works and what doesn't. Um, you know, there, there was this big revolution in, in sort of software development, right? Where moving towards agile development and all yeah. that kind of stuff, right? And the way people build software changed fundamentally. This is kind of like another wave like that. I like to tell people that AI and machine learning is just a different way of writing software. What is the output of a, a training scenario, right? It's a model, and a model is just code. And so, um, I think that as all of these different you know, um, parts of the business figure out how do we leverage these technologies, what it is is it's a different way of writing software. And it's not necessarily going to replace traditional software development, but it's going to augment it. It's going to let you do other interesting things. And so where, where are things going? I think we're going to continue to start coalescing around what are the right ways to do things. Right now we talk about you know, ML ops and how um, development and, and the, the frameworks and all of this innovation, there's so much innovation which means that the industry is moving so quickly that it's hard to settle on things like standards. Um, and, and, or at least best practices, you know, at, at the very least. Yeah. And if the best practices are changing every three months, are they really best practices, right? So, so I think that, target. right, I think, I think that as, um, as we progress and coalesce around kind of what are the right ways to do things, that's really going to make customers' lives easier because you know, today, if you're a software developer, you know, we, we build a lot of software at Pure Storage, right? And if you have people and developers who are familiar with how the process, how the factory functions, then their skills become portable and it becomes easier to onboard people. And AI is still nothing like that right now. It's just yeah. so, so fast moving and it's so, um, uh, Wild West kind of. It's not standardized, it it's not, it's not, um, industrialized, right? And so the next big frontier in all of this amazing stuff is how do we industrialize this and really make it easy to implement for, for organizations? Oil, refineries, industrial there you, there revolution. You I mean, it's on that same trajectory. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Fourth and industrial think, revolution. <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Well, we've talked a lot about the chaos and sort of we are very much at this early stage. Mm. Stepping way back, and this can be your personal, not pure storage opinion, if you okay. want. What in HPC or AIML, well I guess it all falls under the same umbrella, has you most excited? Ooh. So I feel like you're someone who sees a lot of different things, you've got a lot of customers, you're out talking to people. I think that there, there is a lot of advancement in the area of natural language processing, and I think that you know, we're, we're starting to take things just like natural language processing and then turning them into vision processing and all these other, you know, I think the, the most exciting thing for me about AI is that 
there are a lot of people who are, you are, are looking to use these kinds of technologies to make technology more inclusive. Um, and so, you know, you the, the ability for us to do things like automate captioning or the ability to automate descriptive, you know, audio descriptions of, of video streams or, or things like that, um, I think that those are really, I, I think they're really great in terms of bringing the benefits of technology to more people in an automated way because the, the challenge has always been um, bandwidth of, you know, how much uh, a human can do um, and because they were so difficult to automate. And, and what AI is really allowing us to do is build systems, um, whether that's text-to-speech or whether that's translation or whether that's captioning or all these other things. I think the, the way that AI interfaces with humans is really the most interesting part and, and I think the benefits that it can bring there, because there's a lot of talk about all of the things that it does that people don't like or that, they, that, that, that people are yeah. concerned about. But I think it's important to think about all of the really great things that maybe don't necessarily personally impact you, but to the, to the, to the person who's not sighted or to the person who you know, is, is hearing impaired, you know, that's an enormously valuable thing. Um, and the fact that those are becoming easier to do, they're becoming um, better, the quality is getting better, um, I think those are really important for, for everybody. I love that you you brought that up. I think it's a really important note to close on, and you know, there's always the kind of Terminator dark side that we <laughs> that we obsess over, but that's actually not the truth. I mean, when we think yeah. about even just captioning, it's a tool we use on on the cube. It's you know, we see it on our Instagram stories and everything else. That opens the door for so many more people to be able to learn. Right. And and the more we all learn, like you said, the water level rises together, and exactly everything is magical. Justin, it has been a pleasure to have you on board. Uh, last question: Any more bourbon tasting today? Uh. <laughs> Not that I'm aware of, but if you want to come by, I'm sure we can find something somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's the spirit. That, that is the spirit of an innovator right there. there Justin, thank you so much for joining us from Pure Storage. John Furrier, always a pleasure to I'm interview glad. with you. I'm glad I can contribute. Hey, hey, Thank that's you. that's the understatement of the century. It's good to be back. Yeah. Great hopefully, yeah. hopefully I'll oh see you gosh. guys in I'll see you guys in 2034. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, you've got the Pure Accelerate conference. We'll be there. That's right. We'll yeah, we there. have our Pure Accelerate conference next year and uh, Great. Yeah. I love that. You, I mean, feel great, free to you know, hype great that. Company. That's, that's awesome. Great company, great run. Stay true to the mission from day one, all flash, continue to innovate. Congratulations. Yep, thank you so much. Yeah, it's a pleasure it's, being here. It's a fun ride. You are a joy to talk to, and it's clear you're just as excited as we are about hardware. So thanks a lot, Justin. My pleasure. And thank all of you for tuning in to this wonderfully nerdy hardware edition of theCUBE live from Dallas, Texas, where we're at Supercomputing. My name's Savannah Peterson, and I hope you have a wonderful night. Thank you.